power and performance brought to you by Morris Lubricants. Aero car in the making, isn't it? Can you explain exactly what an aero car is? So an aero car is a car with an aeroplane engine. So and an engine out of an aeroplane is known as an aero engine and you put it into a car and, and this is what you get. I have always had a bit of an interest for the pioneers of speed and you read the books about these amazing feats of people going on Pendine Sands mm. and doing 100 mile an hour and doing 120 mile an hour and, 100, and then they died and then somebody else had to go and, <laughs> and you think, wow, you know what, th these were brave men and cutting edge technology back then. And these records were being broken from water to land speed to, to flying back then you know, in the sort of 30s, 40s, 50s, it was almost like a weekly, monthly thing. It was what was the in thing in the, the, the headline newspapers then as who had, who had done what. And we're sort of here in the Lake District and Donald Campbell did it on Coniston mm. spectacularly and lost his life doing it. Um, but, you know, he it, it made history and, and that, that's fascinating to me. So the whole project was really, well, I think we need to build a aero engine car that represents the era, the period of what these brave men did using this engine, and it would be in this, the, the right era to, to do that. So we've looked at what you can do, and the, the sort of the best thing we thought really was to keep the Rolls-Royce theme going. Mm -hmm. And Bentley and other people like that did, did fast cars and everything else. So Rolls-Royce back in the day with the car side of it, they sort of went for more than the gentry line. It yeah, was all about prestige, prestige and, and style and a very posh and all the rest of it. Well, if they rather had... A, a wallow well, rather wallow, than a that, racer, that, yeah. That's it, yeah. And we sort of went, well, if they had have done something, this is maybe what it would have looked like. Uh -huh. So that's my interpretation of it. So we've got a Phantom II Rolls chassis, mm -hmm. which is like the heaviest thing. So you're still paying tribute, built. you know, you're going with the Rolls chassis. So it's Rolls yep. Royce running gear um, with a Rolls Royce engine in it. So that, that's where we're at. And, and it's, it's kind of progressing. We've got sketches, a few drawings, a few measurements. Um, and that's where we're up to really. But we, we've had to do quite a lot of alterations to the engine as we've rebuilt it to do this. Because obviously normally mm -hmm. it would be driving propeller, mm -hmm. which is a big shaft out the top of the engine that usually spins at half the engine speed because they don't want as many RPM, but we want to be the other way. We want some, we want to try and spin a gearbox and a you know propeller shaft to the back axle as quickly as possible, so crank speed. So to do that, we've had to make our own gearbox that is bolted as part of the engine, which has the cam gears in it, do away with that shaft, and we've gone for a direct coupling to the back of the cranks. So we've made this quite fancy bell housing, which we can look at later, but the engine's also the opposite way around to it, it was in an aeroplane. So normally Blimey. this would be the front of the engine aeroplane with the propeller set out the front. But at this stage, it's in the car with that, the drive coming out the back to the back axle and the supercharger and all the air intakes at the front of the car, which is going to be incorporated into some sort of nose at the front to gulp its quantity of air it needs to keep going. So. And there is no blueprint for this whatsoever, is there? No, just in my head, really. Amazing. A bit of a... It's, just, it's like the ultimate reverse engineering in a way. Hmm. Yeah, it is. And it, 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 it's quite, you know, there, there is no right or wrong. It is what it is. And, and we've took the engine. You're, you're quite limited to where you can fit it in a chassis for the size of yeah, it. Yeah, of course. Um, so you haven't got You've massive. got to think about the weight, although it's less than a tonne, as I That's learned. It, yeah. You know, you've still got to think about how it's going to be distributed, especially when you're moving and, right. and things like that. It's a very complex beast. And centre of gravity, we want to keep it low, but then you've got quite a lot underneath the engine. You've got ground clearance, you've got angle, you know, so the, there is, it's more complicated than you think of just like, yeah, let's put that in there and, and bolt it in. But there's a lot of work gone into it, but it is starting to come together. We've got the bare bones of it. The engine's in and bolted in. The chassis subframed out to take it. We've got a gearbox bolted onto a bell housing on the engine, which all works and takes the drive. We've got mm -hmm. a back axle, we've got a prop shaft. So if, you actually, if the engine actually runs and you put it in gear, it would shoot out the shed. We've got not quite got any steering yet. <laughs> I would like we, to see that. But we're nearly <laughs> there. We've got no brakes and we've got no body. Um, we've got the fuel tank, which is quite big, yeah. is in the process of building that. Then our next thing to look at really is where we're going to have the oil tanks for it, which I'm hoping Morris Lubricants is going to help me with the various lubricants that we need to use mm. to do what we're going to do with that. Because I'm guessing it could need like a, a different formulation than, you know, stuff that you can get off the shelf. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, it, it being what they recommend for it to run in an aeroplane, which is the only information we have about it, is a completely different application to what we're trying to do with it in yeah. the car. So. 
I'm keen to sort of talk to them and, and see what they recommend and, and what we use and how we use it. Mm -hmm. And we've also found in, in just running the engine on, on, on a stand for what we're trying to do, when you've not got a propeller on it, it's not actually doing anything at all. It, 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 even with a propeller, quite a big propeller on an aeroplane not going anywhere, it's still using quite a bit of power to turn that. Well, we're not doing that. So we found straight away all sorts of little issues, like it, it, it smokes quite a lot because it's burning oil. And that's yeah, sure. because they weren't built with valve stem oil seals or particularly good seal in the supercharger or anything else because it's usually built to be making power all the time mm -hmm. and being used, which is all trying to blow it's never idle, oil it? out of an engine. So it all pushes, you know, things don't suck in. Well, just ticking over, mm. you're trying to stop the thing from revving up and it's sucking on anything. It's running sort of at minus 15 vacuum on the air intake. So all that is every little tiny, tiny little um, gap or anything you've got around something, it lets oil in. So straight away, it's trying to burn oil. So mm. we've looking at, we've changed the way it's sort of engineered inside with oil seals. We've altered the supercharger with a different oil seal. Um, but the proof of the pudding is going to be once we actually can run it longer and more and actually start to load it up, how much more it does that. But it, it, it's kind of working progress and we'll, 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 we'll get to the point and we might end up taking the engine to bits and altering something a bit and put it building it back up all but 14 000 pieces or well, yeah. maybe not all maybe not all of them might just take the heads off yeah. <laughs> but hopefully uh, we don't have to delve too deep into it but it, it'll be interesting to see how it goes with it really and then we've got the cooling side to look at obviously it produces massive amount of heat oil helps with the cooling so that's it's going to take into consideration is where the oil tanks go and how you take the get the oil back to them and, and that's going to help cool them. But the liquid side of it, we're going to be looking at what sort of coolant we need to run in it, what size of radiator we need to do, if we can fit a radiator bigger in to cool it. Because if you imagine, I mean, this thing, it, it, it's burning a massive amount of fuel. We, we roughly reckon when we're just idling out here, it uses a litre a minute. But wow. if you look at the information given about what they use when they're on full power, it's like 12 litres a minute. Sure. So... It, it, it's a lot of fuel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, So you're burning all that fuel, you're producing a lot of heat, so we need to work out how we're going to cool that. This um, is certainly a masterpiece in the making. <laughs> and, and just architecturally, it looks absolutely pretty darn cool, I would yeah. say. Um, you know, but are you completely happy with it? Because, you, you know, we've been chatting about sort of the positioning of, like, these bits here. Like, what do you think you might change as the build progresses? It, it, it will evolve and the body shape will evolve and how it all sort of works, really. And, and like, like we are saying, these exhausts, I mean, they just literally made those temporarily to put it on and run it because we were originally mm. running with no exhaust on. Well, you struggle to see what exhaust port's doing what and you should, you know, they need a little bit of back pressure. It helps them how they run. So we made this set to run it. Um, I think we'll probably alter the angle of them. We'll come down. We might make some sort of slip on manifold for nice. with an actual exhaust and a silencer on if we, you know, if we need to. Or we'll just, quite like we'll the, just uh, leave the it burning exposed, grass, but, yeah. yeah. Burn some grass. Why Burn not? some grass. But um, keeping up with the fuel is going to be a big problem. It's uh, <laughs> going to be expensive, really. Stay tuned for more episodes of Power and Performance with our amazing engineer extraordinaire, Alex Sharphouse. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe so you don't miss an episode.